Welcome in to the PHNX Suns podcast brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Lindsay Smith here with Saul Bookman, Espo, and Gerald Borgay. Gentlemen, how you feeling today? I'm terrible today. Oh, they no. shelved they shelved the Batgirl movie that cost <laughs> oh. $90 million to make. It's never going to see the light of day. And now I'm wondering, how bad is it? Because DC has put out some really big flaming piles of crap. <laughs> and this one was a movie too far. that We can't release this. I feel like so. it doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you want to at least try and get some of that money back? Or do you get a complete tax write-off if it never sees the light of day? I don't know. We had to bury this one. <laughs> uh, let's write it off. Yeah. I'm I'm a little a little down. This week has been a real what? bummer. What? We lost Bill Russell, and then we lost oh, yeah. Ben Scully yesterday, mm-hmm. and he was one of the legendary voices in sports history. Um, and that was just and to see the outpouring of of just people with with stories about Ben and their personal um, interactions with them was just it was just like really cool, but also really really sad. So. Thank you. Thanks so much, making me look like a total asshole. <laughs> my, my I, mean, I was trying. I was gonna go first, but then you were like, "Nah, we, bad girl." We, we oh, the bad bad girl. <laughs> well, I have no choice oh. but to make you look bad now. Sorry. Yeah, that's sad. We lost two legends in a span of like forty-eight hours. It feels like that was that was rough. Yeah. Two legends in a shitty movie. All right. Um, <laughs> one of these things is not like the other one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how to transition out of this. No, that's a tough one. (laughs) Let's talk some Suns basketball. They made moves yesterday. Not the move, but a move. And it was a fun one at that. So we got a tweet from Woj. We got an email from the Suns today. Also confirming that the Suns and Dwayne Washington Jr. have agreed to a contract. It's a two-way contract. And you'll know Dwayne Washington Jr., he was previously with the Pacers. He's 22 years old. He averaged 9.9 points for the Pacers in 48 games last season. And you know that Gerald has a crystal ball that he's keeping from all of us. (laughs) Because he did say this last week. Are we we not going to play that clip? Do uh, do we have the clip? We should have. We We forgot the clip. (laughs) It's on our Twitter page if you don't believe it. (laughs) Go back in time and then reenact it. There. (laughs) That was the that was marking a, spot for the producer. Yeah, that was a Wayne's we, World, we, Wayne's reference. World oh, reference right here. There I was like, oh, Jesus. Um, no, I mean, we. I am not going to take credit for that because we were just speculating about different targets, but it is funny that they actually did what we said they might do, which is the Pacers wave this guy just to clear out max cap space for DA, and then the Suns match to keep DA, and then they get Dwayne Washington Jr. out of it. Like it's kind of funny. To be fair, the Pacers did have time to re-sign. No, you Washington. can't. Oh, you can't. Once you cut him, you can't. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's beautiful. For three minutes of of hope that they were going to land DA, <laughs> they lose. They cut this guy, and then the Suns get him. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> we talked about playing like five D chess yesterday mm-hmm. when it came to like the Nets screwing with the Celtics. I feel like this is James Jones playing five D chess, going. <laughs> Ha! Screwed you. Because this is a guy that Devin Booker knows well mm-hmm. uh, and, and I'm sure had his eye on as well. So I love it. Yeah, so back in January, he told us that uh, he and, and Lil Dwayne grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan together. Is that he what he knew. called him, Lil Dwayne? Yeah, he yeah! Called him Lil, I think oh, he did sorry. call him Lil, Lil Dwayne. Uh, <laughs> and he knew his dad, and his dad actually, the two Washingtons are related to Derek Fisher, so they brought Fisher around, and that was kind of the first time Book was ever around NBA players. Um, so he's he's known him for a while. He said uh, before the Pacers game, like in Indiana, he went over to his house in Phoenix. Dwayne came over to his house, so they're pretty close, obviously. So you know, in Book, Indiana, you can afford like a mansion with your with your mid level salary. I cannot, two, two I cannot speak to that. <laughs> if I speak, I'll be in trouble. They build but, the houses out of corn out there. Oh I don't boy. know if you do that. <laughs> What? That's tough. <laughs> Guess what, guys? What? We have the clip. Oh, do we yeah, have the yeah, clip? Yeah. Oh, we go. have the, the clip. The last one that I would bring up is kind of uh, Ish Wayne Wright is obviously on the list, but Dwayne Washington Jr. is kind of my under the radar guy that I included there. And it would be really funny if the Pacers waived Dwayne Washington Jr. to make this max cap space for DA, the Suns match DA, and then the Suns go and pick up the guy the Pacers waived. I would kind of be here for that. But he went undrafted in 2021. 
um, and he worked his. He listened to the whole thing because Gerald's <laughs> going to repeat some of those things real quick for us here. Mm -hmm. But for the proof, Gen Gerald knows what's up. Gen We're not worthy. <laughs> do you have sources you're just not telling us about? And this is like your low key way of dropping breadcrumbs for us? I do not have sources. I was Lies. just. This Don't was all admit speculation. That. Lies. No, he I mean, has sources. If no, no, I had he sources. He doesn't have sources. He's just that damn good. <laughs> like, Gerald serious. is a source. Like, it, I'm not even kidding you. Like, he really is that good. Gerald is the best in the business when it comes to finding out what potential moves are out there without talking to anybody in the know. Like, you just are. Gerald is in the know. His brain <laughs> is Gerald the source. Gerald is the source. Gerald is the source. <laughs> you guys are funny. But, uh, Gerald's like, I don't know what to <laughs> say. He, he has no <laughs> idea what to do with all these compliments right now. No, I don't. Um, if, I w if I really had sources, I wouldn't have bothered going to the trouble of going through nine other guys <laughs> that uh, we could have targeted there. But, no, I'm... <laughs> I really like this because I, when I wrote about him, it was as the Suns' fifteenth roster spot. So getting him on a two-way contract, I feel like that's really good value for a guy who played regular rotation minutes in the NBA. Yes, it was on the fifth worst team in the NBA, but he did show some flashes of things that he could do, and I really do like his game. He's at a position of need as far as point guard is concerned. Um, so just to go through some basics with him, he averaged just under 10 points and two assists in 20 minutes a game shot about 40% from the floor and just under 38% from three, about half of his shots, his made shots came from three point range. So he's a guy that can really help you in that respect. He shot 47% on corner threes, um, only 28% on pull-up threes. So off the dribble is not really his thing as far as pull-ups, but he did display an ability to create his own shot if we can pull up the uh, step backs clip because I went through all of his shots last night. And if you look at the film, some of the shots he creates off the bounce are actually really impressive. And as the year went on, he got a lot more confident in kind of pulling off the step back dribble. He had this one against the Knicks where he just puts him in the blender Ooh, and complete. Yeah. I mean, that's sick right there. Like the spin move and the step back and hitting the corner three. That was like. Devin Booker, Kobe-esque. He's got a nice little crossover that he can use and the step back from three. So he's pretty decent off the bounce as far as creating his own shot, and he's an efficient three-point shooter. Um, so I am kind of excited about that. As much as he's not the facilitator that we were kind of hoping for behind those two guards, he can create his own stuff a little bit. But you had some clips of his, his assists. I don't know if those are yeah. ones you're going to bring up here, but it was... I mean, he has potential there too in mm -hmm. distributing, and I I'd love to see him in some of those you know later minutes with a Jacques Landell running pick and roll, mm -hmm. or even with uh, with Biz and 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 doing that because he had some impressive passes. This is a guy with a lot of high upside, and and that's what you're looking for in a two way or even that fifteenth roster spot is a guy that you hope you can grow with. And he certainly seems to have the raw talent to be able to do that. He's got a little bit of length on him. I like that. Uh, also, Landry Shemit, your time's coming. Oh, boy. Oh. Your time's coming, baby. <laughs> you look it's coming. Into the camera. Oh, hey, listen. Uh, I, I, like, I like his form. I like the way he carries himself on the court. Um, he's got a little – he's got some wiggle to his game, which I absolutely love. And, it, listen, I think he's got a, a nice – a nice feel for the game. Um, you know, we were talking about the passes. I'm sure we're going to show those in a second. But um, when you're talking about a pick and roll kind of team, especially with DA and stuff, you need a guy that, that has that kind of awareness. Uh, and and last year we didn't see much of that from, from backup point guards. Uh, hopefully this guy can provide that. Plus the fact that he's 22 mm -hmm. is <laughs> major upside for him because you can actually help him grow and mold his game for what you really need from him. Right. Normally, that's like the youngest age that James Jones starts looking at a player to draft like, right? to get him on a two way <laughs> contract, a 22 year old. I love it because he's only got 48 games under his belt. He's still very moldable. And what better guy to learn from than Chris Paul? You guys both mentioned the playmaking a little bit. So let's pull up the assist clip um, because he was really yeah. good at throwing a couple of pocket passes out of the pick and roll. Um, he had some pretty good feeds to DeMontis Sabonis. They had a good little chemistry there before he got traded to the Kings. Um, but he also ran pretty effectively with backups here too. He, he just knows when to kind of throw that shovel pass, that dump pass, um, that pocket pass. And he found guys for <laughs> really nice looks there. Um, he wasn't a primary ball handler, which is kind of the one thing 
um, that you were hoping for from the Suns with one of these spots. But again, this is a flyer guy, a guy that you can kind of groom up. Um, and he was very efficient in creating looks for other people. He was in the 91st percentile in passing versatility and 98th percentile in passing creation quality. A lot of his assists, if you go back through and watch them, they're right on target. They're right on the money to where they need to go. So I feel like he'll be a pretty good fit in Monty's system for that reason. Look, this is your Aaron Holiday replacement. Young guy, could fight for that third no, guard spot. And not in your heart. <laughs> uh, hopefully in Monty's mind, he's better than Aaron Holiday, so he gets some minutes. Uh, but he seems like that that young upside could be fighting for that that third guard spot, and, and you kind of didn't have that guy in the roster when you let Aaron Holiday go elsewhere. So, Yeah, and, and uh, people in the chat are bringing it up. The one knock on him is his defense, which, you know, fair. Um, that is something to keep an eye on, and that's going to be the basis of whether he can actually earn minutes being the guy on the two-way deal. We've seen it last year. Ish Wainwright was a guy that was able to carve out minutes for himself and land himself an actual contract with this team. But a lot of that was just being sound defensively and being able to switch positions. So that'll be the challenge for Dwayne. And the other big one, you mentioned kind of the wiggle to his game. He has really good, um, he, he's he's crafty around the basket. He's, he's very, honestly looking at some of the clips, if we want to pull up his finishes, they're very campaign-like, the way that he's able to sneak past defenders and kind of lay in these scoop shots before they're able to challenge them, especially with his offhand. Like the right hand there, that's Ricky Rubio, that's campaign, um, very reminiscent of those guys. But he's like he's got kind of this herky-jerkiness to some of his moves off the dribble too, like this one where he freezes Vucevic with the hesitation and then blows right by him. Like Vucevic is not a great defender, but <laughs> he's he's pretty good at, at getting to his spots. The only problem is he needs to kind of work on this because as much as these are the highlight finishes, there were a lot where he just missed layups. He does get blocked at the rim quite a bit just because he might not have the size or athleticism to rise up. But he, he is very good um, about going to the basket. You know, I I like I like it. He's part uh, campaign he's part uh, you know like we talked about Aaron Holiday he's got the hair of uh, Kelly Oubre this guy's got everything to be a f- irrational fan favorite all just, year just wait until those Alvarado matchups with uh, with his hair the hair game right there also do we have a sounder Shane do we have like a, 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 a you know an alert an alarm. sounder or anything like that an Come alarm on, let's go give me something <laughs> <laughs> breaking <laughs> news what the fuck it. is that Our we just got news. a tweet from sham sharania that free agent ish wainwright has agreed to a two-way nba contract to return to the phoenix suns his agents tell the athletic oh, no, no, no. he's oh god, oh, god. No, he's coming home he's coming home <laughs> this is a great last like what, what? 24 hours yeah. how do you get those two guys on two ways i'm great i, I have a can, <laughs> can i put I on like the tin foil hat here yeah they said to these guys kevin durant's coming you're gonna be like the ninth and tenth guys in the rotation when we trade half our roster so <laughs> so sign the two-way but it's going to become an actual contract soon enough. It kind of feels like they're keeping them on retainer a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Just Normally when you put on the tinfoil hat, I'm like, eh, I don't know. But on this case, I I thought Ish Wainwright showed enough to get an NBA contract from somebody. And maybe this is a case of Phoenix gave him his first shot. He really likes it here. He feels he can grow here. But like, I thought he was ready for an actual you know, veteran minimum contract, but still a regular contract. So... To bring him back on a two-way and to get the Dwayne Washington deal done also within the last couple days, that's interesting. They they happen within, like, what, 15 hours of each other? Mm-hmm. They happen within 15 hours of us hearing about mm-hmm. a KD Josai meeting. <laughs> James Jones is like, hey, KD's going to use the nuclear code at this meeting. Come take the two-way. It'll be a real contract soon enough. Huh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but last year Ish was the only one on a two way until Ife. Uh, they had Chandler Hutchison, I oh, think, on right. a two way for, for a, a while there. there, and then they they cut him. Who? Was he on the and two then way? Then they had or was he on the two way? Uh, <laughs> Remember the, the sickness? Clearly, it was a thing. I think he was on a two way. It hasn't even been a whole year. Sorry, you know what's so funny is last year we were talking about uh, our player previews that we we're going to do, and yeah. and Gerald was like, "Should I do one on Chandler Hutchison?" I was like, 
Why? <laughs> and no, I did one in. I think we had the same and reaction to Ish, one. though, too, to be fair, is Wade right? So, oh, I, I mean. Well, one of them proved us wrong. And one of them one proved of them us did. right. And he's coming back. I'm happy for him because he's a good dude. You could tell he wanted to be here. He told us in Summer League when I asked him about his contract talks and his future. He was like, everybody knows I want to be back in Phoenix. Like, that's no secret. So good for him. I'm glad he'll be back and hopefully he'll get bumped up to a, a full-time contract again at some point. We had somebody ask us about the um, any news about the Nets and KD meeting. No, no new news. Um, we had another person in the comment. Jim said the meeting is Friday. I don't know if a, I didn't see anything official on a day. It was week. just later this week. Yeah. Yeah. What that actually means, who knows? But if we get any news or information, we will absolutely talk about it. Yeah. And just to go back to Dwayne real quick, the last thing that I had was his make or break thing is not just the defense, but how he's able to finish at the basket. Because we saw from the clips he can get there and he can finish well when he actually finishes but he only shot just under 48 percent at the basket the league league average is 59 percent um but he was also somehow better than campaign who shot 44 percent at the rim so yeah. something to keep an eye on he's very campaign-esque in a lot of his attacks and just kind of his general playing style so it is it'll be interesting to see whether he's able to carve out minutes i wanted to add, on the defensive front i mean we saw guys like devin uh struggle when this team was bad just because the team defense was bad. Could that be part of what we saw with Dwayne Washington Jr. in Indiana since they were obviously not a very good team? Is it some of maybe we shouldn't read too much into that? It's possible, and I think some of his struggles can be attributed to that, but also some of his strengths can be attributed to that. He had free reign to get up shots. He actually took the third most shots per 36 minutes on the Pacers because they just weren't a very good team, and he was a guy who was able to, he had that confidence. And that's something that we heard Monty Williams praise Aaron Holiday about as far as his confidence in getting up shots. And then he disappeared in the play, come playoff time. So it's one of those things where he might need to dial back his shot selection a little bit. He will take some shots that you're like, what are you doing, man? But he also does hit some tough ones like we brought up. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see whether he can find that happy ground between confidence and doing his thing but also fitting within what the suns are trying to do he has a pretty good wingspan for the defensive side though right isn't he six three with a six eight I, wingspan i, I believe, believe so. so so that should lead to hopefully some additional uh some additional ability on the defensive end because wingspan is huge for those kind of guys too so absolutely so if you are buying the tinfoil hat theory i highly <laughs> recommend you go put some money down on the Suns oh, championship I you were go to odds. OGs. <laughs> that was a good one too. No, I highly recommend you put some money down when the Suns championship odds are whatever they are without get, getting KD because once they get KD, they're going to drop. So now is a great time to get in on that futures bet over at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code PHNX. Make your first deposit and you're going to get a risk free bet up to $1,000. Again, that's promo code PHNX, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Are you guys going to do some futures bets again this year? Yeah. Yeah. We, Which like, ones you kind of got your eye on right now? a month out. We should do a whole episode on that yeah. uh, at right near the season. Okay. Talk about the odds. Talk about what futures bets we're going to go on. Uh, bring in the degenerate uh, Shane Diefenbach uh, behind the Mac to talk about it as well. Really? I think there's something we can oh, also mm -hmm. we can you know, also uh, we can also talk about some of the content we have coming up in the next couple months. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, Espo is going to be doing some history little nuggets here and there, which I think is pretty cool. And then Gerald is going to do some player breakdowns. Um, I know I'm going to do some. We're going to look at the West and get some people that cover some of these teams around the country um, that we think are going to be uh, viable threats for the Suns this year. So it'll be really fun. I'll probably we're have gonna give out some flowers. Yeah, I'll probably have Lots another mental flowers. breakdown, like I, <laughs> like I did yesterday with Kelly Oubre. We got plenty of things. <laughs> You're gonna have a mental breakdown when I'm out trying to give out flowers. Yeah, That's well, probably. <laughs> yes, that'll happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, so definitely download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Tinker around, have some fun. It's a really good app. You guys ready for some screenshots? Let's yeah. do it. It's time for some screenshots presented by Arizona Department of Health Services. COVID-19 vaccines are free for everyone five and older. 
Those 12 and older are also now eligible for a booster. Visit azhealth.gov slash find vaccine for a location near you. A lot of stuff happening on Twitter over the last handful of days. I think we're going to start with this one because I feel like Espo has the most to say about this. So a gentleman called Trevor Paxton on Twitter tweeted out, all right, I won't make you wait all day, introducing what I'm calling the Sun's, quote, original edition concept. Based on the original logo created by Tucson designer Stan Fabe, this blends all eras of Sun's history into one, quote, Mm. refreshed retro concept. What do you guys think? It's a white. Go ahead. You explain uh, it. So it's it's a white jersey with an orange stripe over the chest with the original sunburst with the number in the middle of the of what would be the basketball on that logo with phoenix simply across the chest and that orange bar extends uh around the back to where the number on the back is i love this jersey because of the simplicity because it harkens back to the past that it is a unique look but i confirm there's not a chance in hell nike would ever or the nba would ever let them do a design like that why i didn't get an answer as to why but i think it has something to do with that stripe across that goes around to the back and everything and and potentially something to do with the older logo but how did, how, how, <clears throat> Sorry, I, I, lost I my love voice. that you're okay. choked up about a uniform find. No, I, I I think these are awesome. They're amazing, uh, and I would love to see these. However, I know you have the inside sources. But my question is: is how do you have the inside sources for uniforms, but like nothing else? How do you know I don't have the inside? Maybe I'm well, giving. We've Gerald, been here for a year. You haven't broke giving, anything. Maybe I'm the guy giving Gerald all his. Uh, Damn, his Gerald, shit, he just huh? threw you under the bus. How about that? Maybe I'm confirm. the source. You don't know. Oh, okay. If Gerald ain't gonna take credit for it, I might just steal that credit. Gerald pleads the fifth. Damn, <laughs> I still stealing Gerald's thunder like that. Huh? I got to know a lot of marketing people around the league and things like that in my time there and most of my sources on the basketball side got fired so well, <laughs> and have yet to find other jobs so. r.i.p everybody out there <laughs> what do you guys espo likes it i love it what are you guys in I, i'm on board with it i like the way that it's kind of a throwback inspiration by the original jerseys i i like the design i mean it's not anything too flashy I, it's kind of simple and i like that about it then i'm on an island i don't love it you don't, I don't hate it? it but i don't love it yeah why? Yeah. What's wrong with it? I don't know. I just, it's not, I think it's too simple, maybe. I, I don't know. know. I mean, sometimes simple is good. I'm not saying it's, hey, uh, it's not. <laughs> it's I don't clean. hate it. I just don't love it. That's it, all. I would take this over a turquoise jersey any day. All right. Oh, not the turquoise thing. It, that's blue gonna... gold gets it because it's not black. That's why. Not... That's why I don't oh, love that's it because it's not black. If you would have put it on a black jersey, maybe I would have liked it more. I don't know. It may, it, we'll we'll yeah. find that version of it just for you. Look, I, now you hurt my feelings, Saul, now that I'm thinking about this. Oh, no. You come to me. <laughs> what sources do you have, Saul? Oh, I don't have any no. sources. Okay, thank you. All right, this side of the room carries the source business, oh, all right? Man. Man. I... I'm just saying, like, you were with the organization for, like, a decade. I was there for five years, and literally it was the five worst years. Most people I worked with have no job in basketball anymore. And the five years you were there, you were like, all I care about is the uniforms. Give me all the details, all the uniforms. I know know a lot of front office people that no longer have front office jobs. (laughs) That's the truth of it. It's tough. (laughs) We should move on from this topic. Had to come back to it. Our next AZ Health screenshot. Uh, another one of those random Twitter graphics where somebody decides something about every team. I don't know who decided this one, but it is the every team's overrated player. And surprise, surprise, <laughs> they have Devin Booker listed as the Suns' most overrated player. God. I thought I mean, we were past this. This is a shitty <laughs> list in general. I yeah. mean, let's be honest. But I, I could think of a lot of guys that could be on that list over over Devin Booker. And, and give me one, Mikhail. By I, fan, by our fans, like yeah, <laughs> I, like you could have an argument for CP3 in some people's minds. Uh, you know. Uh, Landry Shamit, uh, you know, in some people's minds. He's not, you you have to be rated you know? in order to be overrated, <laughs> oh, okay? Man, and Landry Shamit is neither. I feel like Frank Frank should be on that list. I just, I, the man just got first team All NBA and was fourth in MVP voting, and we're still putting him on these type of graphics. Like I know it's just some 
It's just some hack <laughs> Celtics OG. Yeah, whoever put Pirtle up there Shane is like is trying a to slander me. Meltdown behind personally. the back right now. Well, with this, some of these this, choices. this graphic really only had one intended purpose, and that was to get to piss at Gerald yeah. Borgay. Yeah, does, yes. Because Gerald is definitely hurt about this graphic. I Devin promise. Booker and Jakob Pirtle oh, have two. no business being on here. Those are the two oh, most like, egregious snubs. Scotty Barnes sure. is on this list. Donovan <laughs> Mitchell, Bradley Beal. I mean, Donovan Mitchell, I'll, I'll give him that. Do you one. think That's John okay. Ryan is overrated? <laughs> No, that was weird. That's a weird one. Shea Gilders Alexander? Like, really? Like, if you'd have put Jaron Jackson Jr. on there for the Grizzlies, maybe I could have seen that. But, like, do you think Jordan Poole is overrated? A no. little bit. No. Maybe a little. A little bit. None for you? I don't think so. I think you he's. Know? I think you he's know? a young, young up and coming yeah, stud. Exactly. Draymond's the one that's overrated on that team. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, not dude that. wants a max. <laughs> all right, that. no, he's over. Asking for a max, I think it's overrated. Little... I mean, get your money. He's crucial to what they do defensively, and he's a big part of their offense with that pick and roll with Steph. I, I can think you if be, you're, can you be overrated before you even play in the NBA? <laughs> technically, yet? Yo, yes. Yeah. yeah Hell yeah. So? Yeah. Look Rock at Chet Holmgren. Bagger. Chet Holmgren's <laughs> oh, overrated as hell. That's true. Oh, I don't. I like him. I don't know. We're gonna see. Oh boy! We're gonna see on Chet Holmgren. He's gonna know. snap his leg in the first game of the season because oh. he weighs like a hundred pounds. Oh man! His bones are made out of like bird bones. Oh man! They're hollow inside. I think I think OKC will have the lightest starting lineup in NBA history. Oh, I'm sure they that's will. my guess this year. In terms of weight, in, or in terms, terms of weight of... across the board, I was like, what are we talking aggregate about? weight of the five uh, people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> really... Yeah, I mean the skin tone is probably a little light too. Uh, <laughs> fair. No, no. Let's be honest. Did you see the NBA in the 50s and 60s? That they're not going to compare. This ain't that, the 50s so. and 60s anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, okay, so CB Craw in the chat said, I mean, he might be overhyped in comparison to other Suns players. No one talks about anyone but Booker CP3. And I think most of NBA fans hate CP3. I hate and overrated are two different yeah. things. Like, yeah, I, I think, I don't, I don't I think, think most people that hate on Chris Paul do respect like what he's achieved in his career, what he's done, just how good he is, but they hate him for the antics. They hate him for the, you know, the sweep throughs and the talking to refs and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the overrated thing, I, I'm just annoyed that we're still there with Devin Booker at this point. How do you even base that? Is it overrated by the fan base? Is it overrated mm, by no. the league? Because if it's the league, I, no, he's still <laughs> underrated. In, the in only, most the things. only thing I will say, uh, and I'm not trying to defend this, mm. but what I will say is, is I do think that the fan base has been team book for like the last four years at such a high level that the casual observer that looks at what book's doing is just like, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why these guys think that this is like Michael Jordan basically is, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the, the amount of affection that the Suns fan base has for Devin Booker um, to the national perspective doesn't match up with the play on the court. Uh, I, you know, for the most part, especially up until the last two years. Mm -hmm. But once you got to the last two years, that was basically all squashed. Um, and I feel like the the love and the support matches what you're seeing on the court as well and the play that you're getting from this guy because he is a superstar now. So uh, I, I get it from a certain perspective, but at the same time, it's disrespectful, highly. I, I will say this forever. Earl Watson did Devin Booker a disservice by the way he got him got him <laughs> seventy points in that game yeah. because he will forever be disliked in part because of that and considered overrated because of that and it's not fair in any way to Devin Booker. It's tough. I, it's like we've talked about before because Devin Booker for so long was the only good thing that we had here. We like clung to him and we watched his progress. We tracked everything about it. And other people didn't watch the Suns because they were winning 17, 19 games. I don't blame them for not watching this team. But when people would say things about Book that weren't true, the fan base would like attack it, like set the dogs on these people on yeah. Twitter, basically. So that's probably why people still push back whenever we talk about how good Devin Booker is. But like you said, over the last two years, I feel like the proof has been in the pudding. Like Kota Kid said, mm, superstar, okay. question mark, question mark. Uh, <laughs> this is what I'll say. Uh, I'll say he is on the verge of being a superstar for sure. He's a star. Mm. A superstar is he's he's close. 
Um, you st he's starting to get the national love. He's getting the national commercials. That's what starts to set you apart. Um, but, you know, I, I, superstars, he's right there. And then Code also said Devin can do no wrong eyeball, like eye roll emoji. I don't know. I feel like we still call Devin out when he has rough moments. <laughs> What but did we talk I, about after game six and seven? We I talked do about kind yeah. of understand what you're saying. Like we've talked about all this before. There's no need to go down this road again. Everybody on this team gets slandered, but because DA gets criticized more harshly, we always got to point out what about Mikhail? What about Devin Booker? Whatever. Yeah. yeah we, I mean, I don't know in general, but I know on this show we've brought up when, when Devin has had his failures in it. I mean, there's no doubt about that, but it's, it, you're nitpicking at that point because it's not a regular on the regular basis. So, what do you want to just criticize to criticize at that point with a guy like that? Do you want to nitpick every part of his game simply because he gets so much praise in town? I I don't think that you need to do that to be you know in any way. But yeah, I don't know. You all right, Gerald? I'm fine. <laughs> Did Shane, Shane send you the tweet too? Shane sent me the tweet. Yeah. Do we? Do we have that, or can we pull that up? Yeah, I can pull it up. Pull it up after our next screenshot. Now I'm... What's the tweet? We have we'll a, show you in a second. We Hold have a on. producer surprise screenshot, yeah, basically. I love that the producer sends it to two out of the four yeah. of us. Right? <laughs> you Shane bastard. All right, while we're waiting for Shane's Fuck producer you, Shane. surprise <laughs> screenshot. Fucking selective bastard. I want a new producer. <laughs> no. He okay, hates like because he ain't us. Why are we always on the outside of these inside I, jokes here between I, these three? I think he sent it because you guys were talking and didn't uh, want to distract you, yes. so he sent it. Sure. He was looking out for you. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, our next AZ House screenshot comes from Quick Trip. Of yes. all people, <laughs> Quip, Quick Trip got in on the trade machine Tuesday action yesterday, put together a trade that gets Katie to Phoenix and sends Mikkel to Philly. And their thoughts on it were basically, well, Mikkel, you get to be reunited with Wawa, so <laughs> you should love this, right? For those that don't know, Wawa is another place like a Circle K or a Quick Trip or whatever those mm -hmm. are in Philly, but... Uh, I also love somebody took this and then said, tagged us at PHNX underscore sons and it said, uh, convenience store draft. And then okay. Quick Trip responded, can we go number one and number two? And I told them, <laughs> yes, as long as they provide us the snacks for the draft. So that's you know, smart. They would, they would not be number one. Just so we all yeah, I don't know that I would pick quick trip. Hey, what, would, give, what would be if they give one? us food? Well, we I'm can't fine. tell you if we have to well, do the draft. It, it, well, oh, Lord, it, we well it, would it be Arizona only or national? No, everywhere. I think you could do oh, whatever. Oh, then you there's want. only one one number one. It's the one with the beaver thing. You Bucky's. Like. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I have no idea. What I've Bucky's never been to a Bucky's. Oh, man. You're no clue what Bucky's is. Oh, road but. trip to a Bucky's. We'll do a show from there. How about that? Yeah, that's gonna take us like 14 hours. Where is a Bucky's? Mostly all in Texas. Okay. DNVR is off to Serbia. We're going to Bucky's. <laughs> we're going to take a freaking uh, hoopty out to freaking Austin. Drop, awesome. Drop your super chats in yes, there if you want us to, to go to a Texas convenience store. Beaver Nuggets, Joel Martinez. You're goddamn right. Those are the freaking awesome things right there. The beaver wanna, Nuggets. Oh. Are they like know. chicken nuggets? They're like... Um, they're made out of uh, beaver. No, they're not made out of beaver. They're like little crispy... Um, there's actually a uh, like uh, like corn pops. Okay. They're like bigger okay. versions of corn pops. Gotcha. Okay. Nice. I'd be down okay. for that. Well, um, that would be hilarious if we took some Jakey car out to Texas for a convenience store at the any, same time. Do we have any international players on our team? Mm, okay. Dario. Yeah. Dario. We go Croatia. Bismack, Dario. Let's go to Croatia. Let's do it. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> Let's go. Can we put that together in a week and a half like they're doing? In <laughs> Let's do it. Right. Um, the funniest part of this is that Mikkel also, no surprise, got in on the action mm -hmm. and quote tweeted and said, y'all so hell, three crying <laughs> emoji faces and weak. Yeah. Mikkel is not down for this trade. No. He wants to stay right where he is. <laughs> 
He's he's had some good back and forth with Quick Trip before because I think he's brought up that he prefers Wawa over them and they've interacted over it before. So this but, is personal for Quick yes, Trip. That's why yes. they're trading him away because oh, yeah. it's personal. Mikhail just doesn't want his fate determined by a convenience store. <laughs> which, nor do yeah. any of us, I yeah. think. Yeah. I don't know. They also put out there in a reply to that tweet that they could they're no expert, but they think they could run a better franchise than one particular owner. In a certain area. Ooh, that's so, yeah. I don't know which one, Lindsay. <laughs> well, um, I don't want to say it. You say it. <laughs> well, they said it. You're not slamming it up. James Dolan. Okay. Well, I think I think the mascot from Bucky's could run a better <laughs> franchise than James Dolan. So they did censor his name though, so that nobody could search it and find them. <laughs> I don't know. That one was hilarious. Shane, are you ready? Okay. Here's the tweet. You guys can all be in on it. Our final screenshot. Shane sent us. Not letting her out till Kevin Durant is in a Phoenix Suns jersey. Damn. And it is an old lady who is standing inside a very tall birdcage. We're putting Lindsay back in the transformation oh, center. No. Yes. 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 <laughs> I actually believe the transformation you center is now so like a health club. I know. That. I, I know. literally was like, I oh thought my you knew God. that woman all of a sudden. I was like, yeah. what? Who is that? That's my mom. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, oh no. I don't Stop. want to. You yeah. do it, Espo. <laughs> Yeah. I'm dumb enough to do some kind of stunt like you that. For, for, like, for the people on audio that team. don't know what the hell we're talking about, that was a woman in a cage. I said that. Did you say that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. an old woman yeah. in a cage. I was, was so like distracted really by that. Oh. It it's funny because we're all laughing at the transformation center jokes and Lindsay's low key having like PTSD flashbacks. Right? <laughs> like, don't put me back there. Like coming back up again. I'm about to have a full on meltdown. Oh, that's tough. Oh my goodness! Now he's in Debo's pigeon coop over here. Like, what the hell is going on? I didn't, I didn't pull this, but can we bring? Can I bring up one other screenshot? We'll mentally do it. Yes. You were screen? making pottery last night. I saw. Oh yes. yeah. How, yeah. I was making yeah. pottery. So I thought fun. I was watching Ghost. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to come behind you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Good job, Shane. Woo! Shane finally caught a movie reference, everybody. Clap for him, please. Uh, no, it was so much fun. I had a blast. I was really bad at it. It's very difficult. Well, like, way harder than I thought it was. Why would be. you think, like, the first time you go to make pottery, you'd be good at it? I mean, I guess I just didn't realize how hard it was to balance it on the wheel. That's what I didn't realize that it was so difficult to get the the clay to balance. You were the Kelly Oubre of pottery. Irrational oh, confidence. Oh, Went in oh. thinking you were going to be a star, right? I didn't think I was going to be a star. <laughs> I just didn't know that it was that difficult. But I signed up for two more classes, so I'm going All back. All right. We, we'll, we'll need a full so, report. Yeah, maybe I'll make a vase for this table. I don't know. We'll find out. Right. Hey, also, a quick way to get your ass kicked out of the comments is saying some dumb shit. So by uh, whatever loser that is saying some stupid shit about some people on this show, we're not having that. Bye forever never come back <laughs> i don't even know where that comes from to be honest with you um <laughs> let me tell you guys about some really cool giveaways that we've got going on for you guys over at gophnx.com so we've partnered with ogs and four peaks so ogs we've got a flavoring life sweepstakes for you and one winner will receive three yes three bags of ogs including orange creamsicle and tropical flavors an OG's hat, a PHNX shirt of your choice, and a PHNX annual membership. You can sign up at gophnx.com or click the link in our show notes to enter into this sweepstakes. Also, if you don't want to wait for the sweepstakes, you can always check out OG's online at ogsbrands.com and on Instagram at ogsbrands. You can also find their products at your local dispensary, but you must be 21 years or older to purchase. Can you can you put that back up, uh, Shane? Can we get Derek one of those free PHNX t-shirts? Because this picture <laughs> disturbs me like, every where time. Where is his shirt? Der Derek has got go? his shirt wait, unbuttoned. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, for, I cannot believe I'm about to do this. <laughs> oh, no. I'm about How to many defend. times have I made you say that? I, I can't believe I'm about to defend Derek. First of all, Derek was one of a few people Listen, the whole company got invited to go out and have a good time at this at this pool. And mm. none of these people came except for 
Shane, myself, Derek, Gerald, uh, the Espo, the one over here clown, and Derek yeah, didn't go. Nobody wants to see me at a date club. There were so many people yeah. out there that looked be, like us. It didn't oh, matter. It was a like, fun time. I, no, nobody wants to see this at like, a date club. And I'm not going to have you shame. You're going to get high on OGs listen, and want to see this listen, at a no, swimsuit. No, 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 Espo. <laughs> we're not going to shame people for living their best life out there because you didn't want to. Like, that's not going to be done. I was living my best life. I didn't fully know that's where that was. Family. That's why I was asking where his shirt when I yeah. didn't know he was at a pool party. Yeah, that it was a pool party. Obviously, that's sense. why he was not wearing a shirt. <laughs> but obviously, as if Derek wouldn't just randomly walk down the street with his button ups unbuttoned, I feel like Derek would do that. Yes, mm. I would be. Derek shocked. would totally do that. He's not so all the way fun down. And no, like he just do that. carefree about everything. Mm. Always down for a good laugh. I can, can we? Totally see can we go back that. to Chris J's comment, uh, Shane? If you don't mind, uh, Chris says. That uh, where do I send things to you guys? I'll send you some Bucky's Beaver Nuggets. Oh, man. DM me on Twitter. I'll yeah. send you the address. <laughs> I actually there. have some Bucky's Beaver Nuggets out of the house. Do you? Bring I, them I, in. Yeah, I have, a, I, have a, I have a bag left. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chris. We appreciate that. Um, okay. <laughs> Who the fuck keeps bringing up Alfred Payton in the <laughs> chat? <Jean, laughs> I'm going to say Jean Paul says Alfred is not coming back. No. Yeah, not breaking no. news. Don't it's pretty clear. So. No. Yeah. Okay, we have a game for you All right, guys. Let's do this. It's the whiteboard game. Oh, yes. And it's essentially the newlyweds game because we are almost. Dun, 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 we, we've been working together dun, 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 for a really long time, dun, 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 so we should know dun, dun, things dun, dun, about dun, dun, each other now. Dun, 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 so we're going to go dun, around in, in um. Dun, 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 Thank you. <laughs> I love that. I'm glad I'm not the only one who has sung on the show now. <laughs> if we're going to do two questions each, but we're going to Gerald, Espo, Saul, Lindsay, Gerald, Espo, Saul, Lindsay. And so, Gerald, you ask your question to the group. We all have to try and match what you put yes. on your whiteboard. All right. So my question, my first question, what is Gerald's favorite nerdy movie franchise? My, uh, and keep and in it's mind, only one. It's not it's only one. There's all, there can only be uh, one. I know that I've got a lot of them, but there can only be one this time. Oh man, this is. It's one of three, and I'm going to go on the <laughs> with the nerdiest one of the three. Oh boy. So for me, it's. He's already insulting me here. Okay. I can't really see that. Hold on. Okay. So Saul's saying Lord of the Rings. Nice. Yes. I am also saying He's Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. No! Lord of the is Marvel's a franchise? I would consider them a franchise. Okay, yes. well then that's my guess. If they're a franchise, if they're not considered, then it's Star Wars. Okay, well they are considered, so okay. your guess is wrong because it was Star Wars. <laughs> what? I was close. I knew it was one of these two. You were, you were close. Uh, you were darn. close. Lord of the Rings is up there, also, guys, along with Harry Potter and Marvel. Yeah. For it's definitely those Star Wars. Keeping yeah. score at home. Now yeah. I need... How is Marvel not your top? That's like your go-to because... every time. Though. Okay, so Marvel is like they have so many movies and i watched them all but like star wars is the original nerdy thing that i was into so I mean, it'll always fair. be my the number OG one. OG nerdy. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, the all OG right. nerd. Do you know why Star Wars has regressed though? Why? It's because it, it went from having just a few and too little to too many. And I feel like that's why it's the the original versions are have been a little bit more watered down now and it's just it's kind of ruined the whole franchise. Too much of a thing can sometimes be bad and that's right. Also, why I feel like like the Marvel stuff, like at first it was just, you know, one or two every summer or whatever. And now it's so many that I, I, I'm not even going to bother to try and keep up because it's just it's too much. It, like an it is a lot. I, it's almost like, no, I kind of understand what you're saying, though. Because... I'm at the fucking pool partying <laughs> while your ass is watching fucking Star Wars. I was hanging home. out with my daughter. Thank you. You, you can't use your daughter for every excuse. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not missing her childhood. <laughs> it's almost like if you hadn't jumped on board earlier, it's hard to get on board now. Yeah. It is. You kind of missed sure. the boat if you didn't hop on. But a I few feel like that's ago. everything now. Like every franchise has spinoffs or prequels, or yeah, like Hollywood's run out of original ideas. But that one has so ideas. many that it I does. feel like that's why it makes. I feel it like hard. Marvel somehow has more though. No, like, Marvel is one of the same more. ones that I also agree the same type of thing. Like yeah. if you didn't. Or if you're if you don't get caught up before the next one hits the theaters, you're just completely mm -hmm. behind, and you may as well just yeah I, check out. I just want them to do new Star Wars stories, like they all are a spinoff of something or other. Like go tell new stories in a different time period. We had a couple people get it right though. Brian and Det both got Star Wars right. Yeah, good all job, right. guys. All right, that's what you're up. All right, if I could change lives with one NBA person, who would it this be? This is so hard. Really not. 
I don't know. I'm just going to pick a sun. I can't think of The question is a present sun or a past sun? Charles Barkley? I said Devin Booker. Ooh. Charles Barkley. Hey Charles Barkley. There you go. All right. So why Charles Barkley? That's yeah. Right. Chris Chris well, had a good good guess, Frank Kaminsky. But oh, no, yeah. I could not live up to the greatness that is Frank Kaminsky. <laughs> uh, no, Chuck Chuck has like the ultimate life, right? He works like two days a week. This is true. Max. Mm -hmm. He gets to say whatever he wants and punk Shaq. I mean, like... They're, Everyone loves him. Everyone wants to hang out with him. He's mm. never paying for a drink or a meal in Phoenix. Like, I would love to experience what it was like to be Charles Barkley for a day. Yeah. That's fair. That's that was my one. second guess, but I went with the current son. I think that was fair, but no. Yeah. All it's right, so weird. what you got? I, all right. Mine Sorry, is uh, my first ever son's poster was what player? God. First ever son's poster. Shamit. <laughs> Landry Shamit. I don't know. So while you guys talk about this, uh -huh. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go. Tom Chambers. I'm gonna go. Kevin Johnson. I went Charles Barkley. Ooh, no, no, and no. No, hey, actually, it was Eddie, it AC Green. It was Eddie Johnson. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, that's Eddie awesome. Johnson, With the yeah. short shorts. And the only reason why I even asked that question is because when Eddie was on, I, I literally talked about that before. So did you? Yeah, I have. Dang. <laughs> so basically, that question was a way to find out if we listened to you or yeah. not. Yeah, <laughs> I already knew. And we all failed. That, so. We all <laughs> failed. Even the chat failed. I, but but the. Kevin Johnson would have been a close second because I did go to buy a Kevin Johnson poster. Mm. Uh, this is at the Coliseum, but my dad, my dad also his favorite player was Eddie Johnson, so we need to get the Eddie Johnson poster. Okay. okay. So, right. I mean, I got one of the names right. Yeah, half <laughs> of it. Yeah. Okay. What is my biggest concern about every topic we discuss on this show? <laughs> this should be an easy one, but I don't know. All right. Mine this is, is too easy. Will it offend? Yep. Hurt, Hurt feelings. feelings. <laughs> Hurt feelings. Cheryl, what you got? I was saying being organized, but being organized is a, good, <laughs> is a close second. But is it mean? Is basically <laughs> is this mean? Yeah. Is this too mean? Just think about our Slack last night. And she literally oh, asked that question. Yeah, like, that's is true. Too much? <laughs> is that too much? I'm always concerned on if we're gonna hurt somebody's feelings. And I'm always the one that's like, fuck them. <laughs> 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 all right gerald what is your next one all right uh what is my biggest pet peeve as a journalist so is this like a journalist as far as your writing or your your job um, well just it's, there's two just my job in general it can apply to the writing but So, Thank all right. you. All right. Mine is asking repetitive questions. Okay. Okay. Or basically asking questions that have already been answered millions of times. Okay. Mine that is, is a pet peeve for sure. People only reading headlines but still commenting about the article. That's a very good one. Ooh, actually. I have another one. When people misquote. Or, oh, oh, that's, that's what it. it. That's uh, it. Being misquoted <laughs> slash misinformation. This there you month. go. I was going to say, uh, is, is this close? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, people saying I'm not paying for that. Can somebody that's, screenshot it? That's up there as well. I <laughs> look. I get it. We all have lots of subscriptions, but I'm not like telling you to read my content. If you like it and you fuck with it, cool. If you don't, that's fine. You don't have to come in that's my mentions cool and tell me my job isn't worth a paywall. <laughs> Slide into my DMs. I'll screenshot you all Gerald's. That's <laughs> 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 like, don't worry, guys. I got you I got covered. You, I got you covered. It's that good. You need to read it. All right, man. Yeah, a lot uh, of people. Yeah. Well, yeah. I should have known. We literally argued about this like last week. <laughs> yes. And we had a yeah. whole conversation about it. There's nothing worse than the feeling of A, when you're tr telling the truth and someone thinks you're lying. And for a journalist, it's when you say something and somebody puts words in your mouth for you. I hate that so yeah. much. Yeah. That's All right. a good one. My next one is what is the one word or name from Sun's history that always makes me cringe? Where do we start? I don't even know <laughs> this one. This is easy for me. I think it's this one. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. I'm going to go with this one just because I think it's funny. All right. That's a good one, too. That was my other I was going to say Robert Ory, but I think Kelly Oubre is funny just based on your <laughs> <Yeah. John Paxton. laughs> Oh, man. I thought I was for sure a winner with Robert Ory. <laughs> no, Paxton. Or Ori's 
Ori's up there, but I after the interview after you guys him, did with him, that's true. I I it, have it a tougher time. It took some of the sting away. Yeah, I have a tougher time disliking. Mr. Hey, I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say something kind of controversial. Oh mm -hmm. boy, he was pretty cool. He was. I, Sorry, I mean, yeah. he was a cool guy. He was. I faked I was sick, so I didn't have to do the interview. But <laughs> I really regret that I did that. Yeah, yeah. you guys I did a great really job with that interview, though. That was really it was good. fun. All right, what's your one next one, Saul? All right, what what small town in Arizona am I from? Oh fudge! Oh, shit, you literally just... said it yesterday. <laughs> what is it called? If Charles is in the chat, he knows. Charles, hurry, tell me. Damn it! I remember we it's talked near Prescott. What's near Prescott? Mm. Nothing. <laughs> I don't remember. Is it? Is All right. it Ooh, I literally Gale? wrote down Prescott. So I don't fucking know. <laughs> What's near Prescott? Can I? Oh, it's Cordis Junction. Yeah. Cordis oh, Junction. Man. I spelled it wrong. But <laughs> there we Cortis. go. At least I knew that you said it that yesterday, so I did listen job, to buddy. you. Oh man, he you did get, say that. that. Thank you. He did Sierra say Vista that for you. Is Sierra that Vista for me. Look at that there. And Gerald's from New Mexico, the land of oh, of Austin. blue meth. So enchantment and <laughs> Heisenberg's. And, and Nesco went to Seton Catholic, so he's from the the Tempe area. Chandler. Okay. Chandler. Seen in Chandler and Tempe. I it's in Chandler. I grew up. He two said, houses "Excuse in me, sir, not yeah, Tempe." Don't don't put us with those swine from Tempe. <laughs> hey, oh. hey, I went to school in Tempe. You now you go. didn't go to ASU. That's what I was referring no, I went to. to so. Marcus mm -hmm. Okay, my last one is what is. Hold on, what did I say? How did I write this? What is different about me today that's never been seen on the show before? Oh, easy. I hope I don't get this wrong because that'd be unfortunate if I did. They're writing straight hair. Hey, I'm shocked you all noticed. I even made a drawing. Can we get to the two shot there, Jacob, the producer? Can we get to the two shot so we can see my beautiful drawing, please? Look, yeah, let me see. Straight hair. There you go. Straight hair. <laughs> Sorry. I caught Jacob mid uh, shoving a zebra cake in his mouth or something. Oh, I want an Encrustable. Oh, my bad. Oh, did so you, far did off. You've got a four-year-old producing our show. Oh. Did you bring enough for the class? You went too long. I love Uncrustables. They are so pretty good. great. Can we make them a sponsor? That would be. That would be legit. That would be legit. Let's get Uncrustable as a sponsor. <laughs> well, that was fun. That was that fun. Was. We should have like kept we score. we didn't do as bad. We probably should have kept score. We did not keep score. <laughs> We didn't it's do as bad as I way. thought we did, though. <laughs> we somebody would inevitably have hurt feelings that uh, one of us doesn't know everybody as well as we thought. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Well. Good show, guys. We have one more giveaway for you guys <laughs> that I want to make sure you guys are all aware of over at gophnx.com. Four Peaks and PHNX are hosting the Toast of the Month sweepstakes. And you can enter to win a $50 Four Peaks gift card, a PHNX shirt of your choice, and a PHNX annual membership. Just head on over to gophnx.com or click the link in the show notes. Also, highly recommend stopping at the grocery store on your way home, grabbing some Four Peaks brews, and uh, cracking open a cold one tonight and just relaxing, knowing that the Suns have two solid players on their roster moving forward. It's all leading to KD is what it is. <laughs> Just a reminder, you have to be 21 or older, and we ask that you enjoy it responsibly. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow, same place, same time. Until we see you tomorrow, you can follow me on Twitter at LindsaySmithAZ. You can follow Saul at Saul underscore Bookman. You can follow Gerald at Gerald Borgay. And, of course, you can follow Espo at Espo. Espo, take us home. Josh Hunt. Uncrustables isn't a great invention. Just cut the crust off your damn own bread. Wow. Oh, boy, boy. Oh.